Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. This is the mission in which I am going to finally orbit the moon. And I'm going to do so with a brand new rocket design. And instead of having you follow me through the entire rocket design stages, I'm, I've assembled some clips, a montage, if you will, of my building process. So I'm going to run that now. It's going to last a few seconds, and then I'll be back live with you uh, when I'm in the VAB and ready to launch. So check it out. <laughs> Thus, the Farlander 9 was born. Uh, a little bit new rocket design, but it was a lot easier, honestly, with the editor to, to design over the Farlander 6, where I had a bunch of extra fuel tanks and stages kind of jury-rigged onto each other. Uh, this one, I was able to take advantage of the symmetry option a lot better. I just, uh, as you might have seen, I built this entire one stage at a time, and then I used the, the symmetry to duplicate it uh, symmetrically, symmetry, symmetrically, on on both sides or on all sides of our of our upper stage here. Uh, it's actually it's a pretty similar rocket to the the Farlander Six. I've got the three stages up here. I did add another RCS fuel because the last time I ran out. Uh, I've got three fuel tanks in the second stage here, but I've moved that up and attached them via these couplers. Uh, which hopefully should be a little bit more stable. Uh, and then that allowed me down here to connect each of these three tricouplers down here to give us, instead of six, we've got nine main engines. So hopefully this will be enough power to get us off the ground. Uh, I hope it's also not too much weight, but I think the that we should be all right. Um, if not, if, if, if this next launch is a little bit of a failure, then I'll have to, I think I should remove uh, one fuel tank from each of these because uh, really I just need to get this stage to get me off the ground the second stage to get me into orbit and then I'm going to use just this final stage for getting into the trans lunar injection and then moon orbit and then getting back to, to Kerbin so here we go oh I actually probably want I forgot to put on some uh, winglets here uh, I don't know how much help these are going to give to me, but, uh, oop, no, get rid of that symmetry thing. Oh, I don't know how much help these are going to give with such a, a big rocket base here, but hopefully, come on, I need that to be like that. Is that lined up? Yes, I think. Uh, just on the bottom stage. I find that when I add the winglets to any of the intermediate stages, it tends to make the, the spacecraft wobble quite a great deal, so I'll avoid doing that. Oh, I didn't select it. There we go. And trying to make them even like that. 
Oh, that one's a little too low. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is the time where I'm going to get to the moon. I'm not sure if I'm going to include this all in one episode. I'll probably be clipping it into multiple episodes, just to be honest, that uh, the last episode, which was like almost 40 minutes, uh, I'm, I'm glad you all enjoyed it, but it, it was quite the bear to edit and then uh, render and then upload forever. So uh, I'll try to keep my videos a little bit shorter, so perhaps this will be a two-parter. Uh, but here we go. Let me save the Farlander 9. Um, I'm slightly concerned about the stability of these connections. I'm not sure how wobbly that's going to be, but I did connect them a little bit higher up on this stage, so hopefully it's, it's steady enough. And really, with all these other connections, everything should be pretty solid. So let's head to the launch pad and see how stable this thing is, and then hopefully get off the ground and head towards the moon. That's actually rock solid. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, the Farlander 9, Bill, Jebediah, and Bob are back for a second attempt at the moon. Uh, and uh, hopefully this thing will take off and we can rejoice once we reach that speck in the distance. So what I'm going to do is put my throttle all the way up. I'm assuming, being a liquid fuel rocket, this is going to be a little bit of a slow takeoff again. Uh, but I've got everything set up, and we're ready to head off. So, in five, four, fingers crossed, three, two, one. Ah, much easier liftoff than the last time. I almost forgot to enable the SAS, but now that's back on board. Going nice and steady. I've got to remember to when I do start to tilt to keep keep this uh, on the, the 90 degrees there so I can stay in in line with a moon orbit, moonar orbit. Uh, but yeah, this is exciting. That that was a much quicker launch than the last one. That one was last one was just a little bit too uh, a little bit too scary. Of course Bob and Bill are scared regardless. Jebediah, crazy as always. Good to have you on board. Nine engines. Might be overkill, but uh, but yeah. Actually, I tried uh, assembling this rocket earlier, but I got, ran into the uh, the radioactive click, 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 click problem, where I guess you, if you mess up too much, then the game doesn't really know how to render your, your spacecraft, so. And still, I keep having problems. I think the buggiest part of the building phase are these connectors right here. You try to connect them like 16 different times and they break and then it resets other ones, but uh, I think I got it figured out. Uh, we've got an amazing onboard camera right here. <laughs> so we see the shores of Kerbin in the distance. I also, based on your requests, added some of these SAS systems. Uh, apparently they're slightly different than the... this is more of just a computer that controls the, the nozzles and the ailerons, or the ailerons, the, uh, the winglets. Whereas these are a little bit more like gyroscopes, so they kind of are supplemental. And I guess as you can see, uh, this SAS force is completely maxing out at 100%, so these additional SAS's, SAS's are kind of picking up where that one is kind of overloading. So that's why these SASs are kind of uh, jumping around. Uh, but I think we're on our last set of fuel. Uh, we're getting up to the upper reaches of the atmosphere. Let me take a look at our... That looks good. Let's get that ready. Uh, after I disconnect here, I am going to bank slightly to get more of an orbital trajectory, as always. But so far, the Farlander 9 is running like a champ. Bill and Bob Kerman, however, have crapped their pants. Alright, we're starting to see some stars. Very nice. We're really going up there. 30 kilometers. I'm going to throttle down just a little bit to make this separation go a little bit easier, I think. We've got a nice trajectory there. OK, 
Okay, do that. I'm going to let myself glide a little bit. That's good. And please, please disconnect when I hit spacebar in three, two, one. Very nice, very nice. That's pretty amazing. Quite a sight. All right, so now let me turn off the SAS and kind of tilt over to get ready for my orbital burn. Which should be happening pretty soon here. I'm going to stay on the 90 degree mark. And I think I should do it right about here. All right, SAS back on, and throttle up, and fire those engines. Very nice. So long. <laughs> I like how it's just floating there, the first stage. It'll go back down, hopefully in the ocean. Hopefully it doesn't land in anybody's backyard. Very nice, exactly what I want to see. The stage is staying together quite well. I'm going to keep my RCS disabled because I don't want to run out of that fuel. It's very important that I don't do that. Uh, also, uh, what's different from the Farlander 6 is on this stage, I had the more powerful rockets. Uh, I've brought them back to the least, the lower powerful, the, the gimbling rockets. Uh, which are not as powerful and they they suck less fuel uh, and uh, uh, so hopefully that'll give me a little bit more time uh, with this upper stage the second stage i should say all right i'm gonna throttle down a little bit i'm going to turn off the sas tilt in the direction i'm heading very nice very nice a little bit of roll there, and hold right there, very good. All right, I'm gonna wait a few seconds to throttle back up. There we go. That should be doing some good things. Indeed, indeed it is. This is a pretty cool looking rocket. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, more so than the giant space peni I was making before. <laughs> Alright, that's going good. And I'm still... Got a bunch of fuel in here, so... Have some time to modify this orbit a little bit, hopefully. Throttle down a little bit because I don't want this orbit to run away from me. Come on, you can do it. Alright, we're on our last three fuel tanks. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Where's this orbit? Alright, just jumping back and forth. I, I'm actually going to be watching the back side. I think I should be... Okay. Watch this. Wait till it gets to 100. Or 200, actually. Actually, let me... I'll cut the engines right here. Uh, that was a little weird. Uh, so I'm going to wait till I get to the Apuapis. Uh, and then I'll modify this side so it equals 200. And then I need to plan on... I don't know, let's, let's say the moon's going to be there when we get out there, so... Uh, probably right around the Periapis, 
I still don't, I still can't pronounce these. Uh, somewhere around here is where I'll do my lunar, lunar burn. So, or mooner, sorry, mooner, M-U-N. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let me fast forward here and I will bring you back in when I am ready to show you something magnificent. All right, I'm back and I'm about to do a little bit of an orbit modification here. So I'm quickly approaching the Apoapis. Oh, I think I'm at it. Crap. A little bit behind schedule here. Yep, I'm starting to lose altitude. Uh, so let me kind of fast forward it a little bit too much. Come on, get back to a little bit. Say right. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. And let's do that. I'll turn off the RCS and throttle up. See what that does to my orbit. Get that around 200. Two twenty three to two eleven. I suppose I can throttle up just a little bit to make that a little bit more even. Eh, that's close enough. All right. Two what is that? Two sixteen? Two sixteen by two forty five. That's pretty good. Uh, and then I'm going to want to try to do another burn for a mooner, trans mooner injection. Let's aim, say, right there. Uh, a lot of you were saying that I should wait for the moon to rise over the, uh, the horizon of Kerbal, Kerbin, and then that's when I should do my burn. So maybe that's the advice I'll take. I remember from the last time that that was about the same time I wanted to do my burn. So, uh, so yeah, let me uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. get back to our ship. We still, once again, have three half filled fuel tanks. Um, I'm debating whether or not I should just drop this stage due to the last problems we had. I don't want uh, to use this fuel and then, you know, get stuck onto the stage again and have problems like that. I should probably, I should probably be fine with the upper stage, to be honest. Ooh, that's a tough decision to make. Uh, all right, I'm going to mull that over, and then I'll bring you guys back when I have, have a decision and when I'm about to do the uh, trans-mooner burn.